News 25 is brought to you by Dr. George Leakes, Pahrump's optometrist since 1990, offering full spectrum eye care for children and adults. Call today, 727-8300. News is also brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Call 727-9900 today for your free consultation. If you need a lawyer, you need Nelson. Tonight, a married couple is found deceased in the desert, and a head-on collision results in four injuries. News 25 starts now. This is News 25 with Deanna O'Donnell. News 25. Local coverage you can count on. You know, police are investigating two deaths. It's Monday, July 29th. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. A popular fitness-minded married couple originally from California who lived in the Cayman Islands were found deceased next to their rental car over the border in California last week. The Inyo County Sheriff says 69-year-old Yvonne Blanco and her husband, 74-year-old Keith Henderman, were located on July 22nd in a remote area off Old Spanish Trail, about six miles southwest of Charleston View. Inyo County Sheriff's deputies, members of MINT, the major investigations and narcotics team, Inyo County District Attorney investigators, and the Lone Pine Coroner responded. The coroner believes that the bodies were in this location for approximately 24 hours prior to discovery. Investigations confirmed that the vehicle was a rental out of Las Vegas. It was a black 2019 Toyota RAV4. At this time, there is an open investigation in order to determine whether there was foul play involved. Both Blanco and Henderman will have forensic autopsies performed out of Inyo County. The couple who lived in the Cayman I Islands also lived at the Seven Mile Beach condo complex in Laguna Del Mar. They told friends that they would be traveling last week on vacation. The State Bar of California records shows Henderman held an inactive attorney license and that he was a UCLA law school graduate. He graduated from the University of Southern California in 1967 with a bachelor's degree in political science. The gym where the couple frequented told local media sources in the Caymans that both individuals were very fit and active. They were well known and outgoing. Well, traffic was blocked Sunday afternoon following a high impact crash at Mesquite Avenue and Highway 160. We were dispatched for a report of a two-vehicle accident. The initial report was to two unconscious people on the scene. Uh, very few details as to the mechanism. We arrived in a location and found two SUVs had hit head-on. It was a secondary impact sustained by one of the SUVs when it impacted a power pole. The scene size up revealed that there was no entrapment. However, the initial count was five people that were injured in the accident. That was subsequently dropped to four. One required flight. Ma managed the incident under our mass casualty protocols due to the number of patients. We brought in two additional medics and also added Mercy Air 21 to the assignment. The LZ was established on Highway 160 just north of the accident scene. That patient was subsequently flown to trauma. The remainder of the patients were transported to our local Local hospital. And local and federal law enforcement are searching a northern Nevada home connected to the man who injured over a dozen people and killed three, a six-year-old boy, a 13-year-old girl, and a man in his 20s at the Gilroy Garlic Festival in California yesterday. Authorities say 19-year-old Rocker Lake resident Santino William Legan purchased his weapon legally here in Nevada three weeks ago. Witnesses state that the suspect, who was shot and killed by police, had assault-style rifle with him and appeared to shoot at random. Legan's recent social media posts talk about white supremacist ideation and commented on people of mixed descent. The Mineral County District Attorney's Office confirmed in a statement that sheriff's deputies helped FBI agents search a home in Walker Lake, Nevada. Legan was originally from Gilroy, and that is where his father still lives. Police believe that the suspect cut through a fence to avoid metal detectors and security to enter the event. Well, a bike rider was transported via Mercy Air to a trauma center following a collision with a vehicle on Gamebird Road. Our crews responded. They found the bicyclist sustained significant trauma as a result of an impact with an automobile. They were taken to base 21 and Mercier subsequently flew him out the trauma. It's my understanding that there was head trauma as well as multi-system trauma. And two major phone companies are hoping to merge. That and more in your financial news report. Here's Angela Miles with today's Business First Brief. 
Topping our news, done deal. The Department of Justice is allowing the $26 billion merger between T-Mobile and Sprint. Sprint shares reached a record for the year, and T-Mobile stock hit an all-time high on the news. Food deals and restaurant upgrades are boosting business at McDonald's. The stock jumped to its highest level ever during Friday's trading session. Earnings and revenue beat expectations for the second quarter. Sales edged up 5.7%, but McDonald's took a hit by selling off some of its corporate-owned locations to franchisees. Twitter is flying. That stock is up more than 32% this year. The social media site recently beat the street on earnings. Twitter reports reaching an average of 139 million daily active users last quarter. To find out where you can see us every day, go to businessfirstam.com. More news right after this break. You're watching KPVM News 25. Local coverage you can count on. Welcome back. Well, a small RV being used as a main residence burnt to the ground last night off East Charleston Park in a homeless camp. Structure fire late day yesterday. Uh, we got an initial report of a trailer uh, initially located behind the Best Western. However, it was found to be in the homeless camp area well beyond the, the Best Western RV park. Found it was an occupied structure. The, both occupants got out of the fire and uh, it's under investigation. The uh, structure is a complete loss due to its location and the advanced fire conditions upon our arrival. There was a delay in getting the information to us and then it was a subsequent delay on getting our apparatus to the scene as there weren't established roadways, they were dirt roads at best and uh, it was well up in the alluvial fan. We believe it to be accidental at the uh, hands of possibly the residents that were in the trailer at the time. Uh, there was nothing suggesting an intentional act and there was no power to the structure. Well, Nye County is facing another lawsuit. Unit Gentry reports. In today's court report, Ronnie Boscovich, the former deputy district attorney who filed a complaint against Nye County after being terminated from her position, has a settlement conference scheduled next month. And if no agreement is made, then Boscovich has a hearing scheduled on December 3rd regarding that matter. The Nye County Management Employees Association, or NCMEA, is listed as a co-complainant along with Boscovich in this case. There are three main issues listed in this complaint. Number one, whether the county willfully, deliberately, and egregiously engaged in bad faith bargaining and or refused to bargain in good faith in violation of Nevada Revised Statute 288.270. Number two, whether the county violated parts of that NRS when it terminated Boscovich's employment. And number three, whether the county was required as a matter of Nevada law to bargain with NCMEA regarding discipline and discharge prior to terminating Boscovich. Following being severed from her job, Boscovich requested that Nye County state the reasons for her termination. She was later sent a letter outlining the primary reasons why she was terminated. There were several reported issues of concern and misconduct linked to Boscovich that were alleged to have occurred, according to Chris Arabia, Nye County District Attorney. According to a response filing by the county, general issues with Boscovich included that she seemingly demonstrated a lack of fitness and suitability for the position by displaying poor judgment, improper circumvention of the district attorney and her supervisor, improper disclosure of confidential information, and failure to take action to disclose and or avoid conflicts of interest. Specifically, these issues involved Boscovich's failure to recognize the legal significance of non-compliance with marijuana regulations and procedures in the Nye County Code, misleading the Nye County Board of County Commissioners and proposing to obscure violations of an ordinance by eliminating a section of the ordinance in question and concealing the same from district attorneys, office members, and four members of the BOCC. Other specified allegations waged against Boscovich include her purportedly disclosing the existence and substance of, of sensitive, legally significant, and confidential information related to marijuana regulations, procedures, brothels, and conflicts of interest, which included the disclosure to three people potentially involved in the matter, as well as disclosure to at least two other people. However, Boscovich states that, quote, these allegations are egregious, 
false and defamatory. And Boscovich stated to the Perrant Valley Times that she never once received a single verbal or written warning or write-up and received nothing but positive feedback from all of her supervisors and co-workers in both the civil and criminal divisions, including Mr. Arabia himself. The county has previously declared that it did have the authority to terminate Boscovich because she was originally employed on an at-will basis, which would allow Nye County District Attorney's Office to remove her from her position at any time with or without reason. However, there are questions about whether Boscovich's termination was retaliation after she testified in favor of unionization and the Nye County Management Employees Association. The county denies those allegations. This has been your court report. I'm Unette Gentry for News 25. Thanks, Unette. Well, new homes are being built in Mountain Falls. We'll have that story and more right after this break. News 25 is brought to you by Bill and Robin Law, injury attorneys. Injured? Need money? Get Bill and Robin, your local Pahrump injury attorneys. Well, county commissioners approved over 50 additional homes to be constructed in Mountain Falls. At the recent Board of County Commissioners meeting, discussion was had regarding two tentative subdivision map applications and the status of development agreement between Nye County and William Lyon Homes for the Mountain Falls subdivision or master plan community. The meeting started with item 46, which was for a tentative subdivision map application, a residential one, containing 52 residential lots and no common element lots on approximately 13.93 acre gross on a property zoned specific plan and low located within the Mountain Falls Master Plan community. Um, all we're doing on this is just moving forward with the exact tentative map, the exact lot count, the exact lot dimensions as we had back in 2006. I will note that the infrastructure has been put in. Um, the whole site has been rough graded um, for the second unit. And so all, all we're asking for is to have you please concur with staff recommendations on the approval so we could um, move forward with that. Commissioner Strickland makes a motion to approve. The chairman calls for the vote. All right, I'm going to call for the Thank question. You. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. I'm going to take my normal stance and say nay. There you go. Okay. Moving on to item 47, this was for a tentative subdivision map application containing three parcels and six common element lots on approximately 7.99 acres gross on property zone specific plan, and this is also located within Mountain Falls master plan community. What we're doing is we're simply cleaning up right of way and cleaning up um, parcelization on the intersection as you come off a of man's road into the, um, into the master plan community, and that's all it is. Commissioner Wickman makes a motion to approve and the chairman calls for the vote. We call for the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Make let the record say that Commissioner Cox wasn't present. Four to zero. And finally, on item 58, they spoke of the status of the development agreement between Nye County and William Lyon Homes for the Mountain Falls subdivision or master plan community. This explains the status of um, and the compliance of the Mountain Falls development agreement as of May the 6th of 2019. And um, some topics that um, I'll just kind of elaborate on briefly, it talks about the water rights um, down on section 4.1 on that first page. And I guess to explain a little bit further in depth than what's indicated on here, um, and I've got Jim Wolfenstein, an owner of the, the parcel, which will be the tentative map up next here, and he was um, actually telling me about this before the meeting, <clears throat> is that the original water rights were, they were non-revocable, and they came from the uh, farmland underlying that. Al Collins then purchased the property and began the development of master, the master plan. And um, subsequent, obviously, William Line Homes has now purchased that from from Jim, from Al Collins, and we're proceeding on to where we're at today. But the water rights are non-revocable, and they will suffice for all 3,200 units in the master plan. And the way that those things are transferred ultimately to the individual purchasers of the lots so would be upon the recordation of the final map. So um, Mountain Falls or William Line Homes LLC has the water rights. They transfer over to Great Basin Water Authority, 
um, with the recordation of a final map, then ultimately that would be passed on to the individual people buying the, buying the subdivision lot. So I wanted to clarify that. Commissioner Strickland makes a final comment. Yes, you guys have got a great deal going on here for your, just your little inside development. But you're, the people that you're selling to are reaching out into our community and having needs from our community. And we are not getting, uh, we're not being a good neighbor to each other at this point. It'd be one thing if we weren't growing like crazy and um, these roads are going to be abused. And so I would just like you to consider coming back to the table on those items. Well, the Nye County Sheriff's Office Positive Perump and Perump Disability Outreach Program held their annual school supply drive this Saturday at Walmart. We are sweaty and hot, and we're down here at the back to school drive, and we're enjoying the hot sun, and we're collecting uh, supplies for, for back to school. It's the schools produce lists based on grade. We have them here, and also they have them in the store, and we're just uh, having people collect the supplies that they can, and so far we've been so successful as usual. I'm here for the sheriff's office, and obviously as the president of PDOP, I'm representing them as well. So we let people come back here in the afternoon and collect uh, school supplies. We always have some left, and, and traditionally we donate those to the teachers. Um, so at the very end, whatever we have left, we give to the teachers to help save them from having to purchase out of pocket for school supplies. I have about 15 to 20 families right now. Currently, that will be here around 12:30 to pick up supplies. So traditionally, uh, it's the regular school supplies: notepads, pencils, pens, glue, scissors, crayons. Um, and, and anyone that can't donate today certainly can go to any of our substations uh, in, in Nye County and donate school supplies. We've got school drives here today in Pahrump, Fadia, and Tonopah. Um, so we'll be doing a bulk of the collecting now, but certainly uh, the rest of the week and, and into the next month they can come and, and donate at our substation and we'll get it distributed. Realistically, after this drive, um, there won't be, I won't be giving out supplies or collecting them after today. Will you be doing your Christmas drive, the um, same drive that you guys normally do, or helping out with that? Most likely. I'm sure we'll be doing it again. Yeah. News 25 Weather Cam is brought to you by Lerner and Rowe Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. And in that last story, that was actually Stephanie Lopez from Positive Prompt, not Stephanie Brukowitz. Although he, his wife is named Stephanie. We'll take a look outside right now, and we are looking at a little bit of windy conditions. We are going to tell you a little bit more about our weather forecast right after this break. News 25 weather is brought to you by Dairy Council of Nevada. The splash of cream in your coffee, the dollop of sour cream on your burrito, the melted toasty cheese on your pizza. Undeniably delicious, undeniably dairy. Enjoy what's real. And by a Pahrump Rental and Do It Best Hardware. Your friendly small town hardware store. Shop small, shop local. Well, Michael is off for the next couple weeks, and we're going to have weather from the desk with your surrounding areas here in Las Vegas. 112 is your high today, 84 is your low tonight. Death Valley, 120 with your low tonight of 88. Amargosa, 109.74. Beatty, 103.69. Goldfield 94.59, Tonopah your high is 91 with your low of 57, Carson City 91.53, Fallon 97.54, and Fernley 96 with your low tonight of 56. Here in Pahrump 106 with your UV index at 10, mostly sunny skies, with your high of 108, winds out of the south southwest at 10 miles per hour, with humidity at 6%, and sunrise 5.48 in the morning. Tonight we're looking at clear skies, we are low of 79, winds out of the south-southeast at 8 miles per hour, with humidity at 10 percent, sunset 751. Your seven-day forecast shows us cooling down just a little bit on Wednesday with some clouds coming in. Your high of 97, low of 77. Thursday and Friday clearing up with 99 on Thursday as your high, 75 is your low. Going back to the triple digits on Friday, 100 as your high, 76 is your low. Staying at 102 Saturday and Sunday with your lows all three days, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. 
of 78. And Monday, coming back just a tick to 103 with your clear skies. Well, that's going to wrap up this edition of News 25. I'm Deanna O'Donnell from all of us up here at KPVM-TV and Ace Country Radio. Have a great night. We'll see you back here tomorrow.